idea. What do you think? <laughs> Welcome to Improving Parent-Child Relationships. I'm Dr. Carolyn Morris. In this series, we'll be joining families in their homes and a weekly parent education class. The goal is to improve relationships between parents and children by using strengths and some basic principles to solve the problems that occur. You can use these ideas to greatly improve your relationships with children, realizing that family life will never be perfect. In this episode, we'll be visiting with Kathy and her four-year-old son Joseph and her 18-month-old Samantha. Kathy is working on establishing credibility with her children by taking action rather than talking, being consistent, and allowing her children to experience the consequences of their own actions. As we begin, Kathy is pointing out the needs of the situation. Now, here's your glasses. You gotta make sure the windows rolled up and the doors are locked. Here you go. Who have weapons? Please put them in the house. Oh. Well, I would have, but you need to ask me that way. That's not how you do it, is it? Well, there, I'm gonna step on them. They're right in my way. He was going to put them away, right? He tosses them in the door. Uh -huh. And you said... I'm going to step on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you choose to say that to him? Well, because I'd already told him to put them away once. And he, and he didn't? No. So you're just raising the awareness that, that possibly things left on the floor do get stepped on. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I, I like about this is instead of telling him what he ought to do, you go pick up those sunglasses, you're just pointing out what could happen to them. You know, I might step on them, they might get broken, whatever, and he can draw the conclusion about what he needs to do. Uh -huh. Respond calmly. State the needs of the situation, not what to do. Allow natural consequences. Just eat your snack, baby. <laughs> my Can I have a pretzel, please? Four. I can have four? Yeah. Can you count them to me? One, two, three, seven, four. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. What if I eat one? How many is left? How many left? Four? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. What? Well, if I eat one, how many is there now? So here's a nice playful example of you doing some counting with him, right, and having some fun with it. I love the laugh. It's so contagious and friendly and <laughs> sincere, really, I think. He counts out four for you. And you eat one, and now how many's left? And it must be five, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that looks like just good fun. Fun and humor build the relationship. Giving appropriate attention results in fewer bids for undue attention. Hey! Hey! I'm going to take only one back and give it to your sister, because that was hers. point at which he works on taking Samantha's. Mm -hmm. and just he says, I'm going to take just one. And I said, well, I'm going to take just one and give it back to her because it's not yours. And then he wouldn't leave her alone. So I pushed her away so he couldn't reach her. Yeah. That, just looking at the tape, that looks so kind of like it went well. I mean, it was an easy thing to do. And yet I think it's resourceful because look what could have happened there. There could have been big lectures about this. There could have been talking about how it isn't nice and you didn't do any of that, you just removed the possibility. Overall here what I see is that, that you've learned that talking to them doesn't do that much good. No, it's, it's it wears me it. out. It wears you out and that, that acting really is a more effective thing and sometimes you can do that with tremendous economy of motion. Take action rather than talking. Oh, thank you. Mm. Here you go. Here 
we see Kathy taking time to build her relationship with Samantha. This is important because all children need attention and want to feel included. When time is given, children are less likely to demand it in unreasonable ways. The movement toward the child may be more meaningful than the amount of time spent. It's also a good time for teaching social skills. Hey. You're what? Your sister's looking at the mail. You went outside to play, the door's still open. You're gonna let all those bugs in the house in your sleep with you. When children draw conclusions about what to do, they're more likely to do it. They feel respected and gain confidence. Parents gain confidence in children as well as in themselves. begins with you on the phone having a conversation and trying to. He interrupts you. What do you see yourself as attempting to do? Talk on the phone. Yeah. The, well, you acknowledged phone. him. He said, I'm yeah. talking on the phone now. And it would have been nice if he would have left you, but, but he didn't. Right. He did for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But then you said you need to go. And I thought you sounded very clear about it, that you intended to continue your phone conversation pretty much no matter what happened. Mm -hmm. And you did. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, with a minimum of talking to him, really, I think. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. But then, um, he brings the book into the kitchen. Um, was he trying to refrigerate it? I don't know what he was doing. I don't remember. <laughs> he was screwing around the refrigerator, and I didn't want him in the refrigerator. And I don't know if he's put... He told me, I think, he's putting the book in the refrigerator. I told him he didn't need to put the book in the refrigerator. I didn't want to listen, he was just screwing around trying to get my attention because I was on the phone. So I took the book and put it up. I think it's probably still in the cupboard. I forgot I did that. <laughs> it's okay because it doesn't. I'm going to go home and get the book It's okay because it cupboard. doesn't need refrigeration. Do you feel sorry for him? No. He's not a poor thing. He's not, he's not unhappy. He's not no. inconsolable. He's just trying to get his way. Yeah. yeah. Be aware when a power struggle is starting. Remove yourself from the power struggle. Tantrums will stop when the audience is removed. It needs to stay in the kitchen, honey. Water needs to stay in the kitchen. Stay in the kitchen. Take it in the living room, it'll disappear. Water doesn't go in the living room.
What do you see her doing? She's testing. It's hard to believe somebody so little can have so much intention, doesn't it? I mean, she really is looking I to see. I used to think that. <laughs> <laughs> So she really is keeping her eye on you. And the first time she does this, I think it's wonderful that, that although you've told her the, the drink needs to stay in the kitchen, she goes, literally, she is oh, standing she on the book. line. Why does one in the room? Just right on the line and then tosses it on the other side of the line to see what will happen. And what happened was you took it. <laughs> you really said what you meant, you meant it, you're prepared to follow up, and you do, every time. And, and the second time she takes it in there, I think she's so obviously just checking. She looks at you and wants to know what you're going to do. I don't even think she was thirsty at all the whole time. No, well, she wasn't. And she got attention. She, I don't think she was thirsty. She's standing there and goes, thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. I don't think she's thirsty. The third time when, when you kind of walk past her and take it from her, she didn't cry at all. I think because she was trying to figure out exactly what was happening. And then on the way back, she could see she wasn't going to get it. Yeah. And that's when she began to cry. <laughs> If you only looked at that part of it, you know, her, the sadness in her face and how kind of pathetic it looks, <laughs> one might feel sorry for her. One doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, why don't you feel sorry for this poor, pathetic little child? Because I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because it was so intentional on her oh, part. Yeah. And she has a choice not to be sad because she has a choice not to take it in the living room. It's okay for her to have it in the kitchen. She can drink all she wants, but she isn't allowed to have it in the, in the living room. So making that choice means it's going to be taken away. So how sorry can you feel for her, even though she looks pretty sad at this point? <laughs> and maybe she's not sad about not having the drink. Maybe she's sad about not having her way. Mm -hmm. Establish reasonable limits. Enforce them consistently. Expect children to test limits. Be an observer without being upset. Realize the struggle is about who gets their way. So this begins with you laying on the couch and Joseph coming over to give you a kiss, which you've asked him to do. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice game you make of him giving you another, giving you another, and finally he goes to the door <laughs> and takes the position. No more. <laughs> but it seems like it's all in good fun. Mm -hmm. I think it really speaks well for the playfulness and good, good humor in the relationship. Enjoy playful and affectionate moments. I thought a very good job of staying involved with it. She's opened the drawer, she's got two. You've told her she can have one. 
So it looks to me like there's a period of her kind of thinking through whether or not she could actually have two or whether you really meant one. And then she kind of looks at you and you've taken a look to see what she's doing, but you're continuing right on with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So my guess is she's deciding that probably you really did mean one. And if she has two, she might end up with none. So she puts one back and then slams the drawer shut but she's got the one that she thought she could have. So I see that as a, a really a very young, Pretty but very purposeful testing to see what would happen here. And I think that you have established uh, credibility with her because it looks to me like she really does believe if she kept them both, she'd end up with nothing. <laughs> what, what do you think? Do you think it's possible? Yeah. yeah. This sequence and the ones before show how even very young children clearly understand limits. Setting and kindly enforcing limits, even at this young age, establishes credibility of the parent and sets the tone for the relationship for years to come. So she was kind of tossing things in. Uh, there's one point at wh where you missed the bucket. How oh, come? I, did, I just did it on purpose several times after that, too, because then it was a game. Mm -hmm. So she'd pick it up. So I could say, thank you. <laughs> well, actually, that's very good training, right? Mm -hmm. And it, all the picking up doesn't have to be done by you, and that she can go get things and bring them back. Sometimes it is appropriate and effective to sidestep a power struggle by making it into a game. Like he was called for dinner but didn't come. Is, is that what yeah. happened here? He didn't want to eat. He didn't want to eat. Joseph doesn't want to eat any dinner, Sam. So you and Samantha. He wasn't hungry. He wasn't hungry. Yeah. So you and Samantha just went ahead with dinner. Mm -hmm. Then the consequence of not coming for dinner was it was over. Yeah. yeah. So then he came in and somehow, magically, he was hungry then. Mm -hmm. Right? and went over to the table and, and sat in the little riser seat and was pretty upset. There were no, no items on the table. Yeah. That's a pathetic moment in time, isn't it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> now, why isn't that sad? Because I, mean, so I asked him sad. a couple of times, are you sure you're not hungry? Are you sure you don't want to come in and eat? Because when we're done, that's it. I ain't cooking twice. Yeah. So you made it very clear. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't unkind because it was clear that he had a chance to have something to eat. And I'm guessing that you're guessing he's not that hungry anyway or he would have run right in and had the food. He just wants to have his way in terms of getting you to do something extra for him. Mm -hmm. Follow through with reasonable limits. Allow children to experience the consequences of their own decisions. And it isn't necessary to feel sorry for them. <laughs>
he breaks the glasses <laughs> and looks toward the kitchen while he's breaking them, right? <laughs> so it, it looks like it could be a bit of revenge. Yes. <laughs> Now, did you actually see that at the time, or did no. you see it for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you see it, what do you think? Oh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> then, after he breaks them, he actually does it a second time, <laughs> just in case you missed it the first time, right, with equal intention. But you're still not giving lecturing on breaking glasses. So this, the third time, he actually comes into the kitchen <laughs> and kind of gets into your face with the broken glasses. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. You got sunglasses broken off? You weren't upset about it. No. You didn't look upset. You just calmly took them and put them in the garbage because by well, then they were Well, first you didn't want to give them to me, though. That That's was right. great. And instead of playing a chase game and tackling him down and grabbing the glasses, you just went right back into the kitchen. And of course, he came back. Yeah, it's because he wasn't satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you missed that I broke these glasses. So that's pretty, pretty in your face. And that's when you calmly took them and put them in the garbage mm -hmm. and, say, and said, well, I guess there won't be any glasses. What did you see as his reaction when you put them in the trash? We only saw I the think back he of knew head. that they were going to go in the trash. He knew when he broke them that that's where they were going to go. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was a surprise. So he accepted that, yeah, the trash? I think so. Stay calm when children escalate their behavior. Stay uninvolved even if power turns into revenge. Continue with normal activities. Does he know he's not supposed to pat on the glass? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why a lecture about it wouldn't wouldn't be very effective, right? No. So, but you did give him a message from the couch, which is something like, "I wouldn't do that if I were you." Yeah, it suggests you stop. <laughs> suggests you stop, and he didn't. So at that point, what were you thinking about? I mean, your deliberations <coughs> about what to do. You Take look? it away, so he can't do it anymore. So that involved getting up. I mean, sometimes that's hard. You think, oh, now I've got to get up and go get him. Uh -huh. It would have been easier to give a lecture from the couch, but you didn't. I guess seeing that that would have been a waste of time. Yeah. yeah. So you got up it, and took him away. It was easier to get up and take it away than it was to lay on the couch and talk for half an hour about hitting glass. Yeah. Now, <laughs> when you took him away from the window, you didn't look angry. Were, were you not angry? Was He was tired and he was frustrated. Tired and frustrated because <laughs> he was just keeping it up. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was very generous that you picked him up because I think what I got out of that was your point wasn't to punish him for banging on the glass or to, to give him a hard time, but just to make it not possible for him to return to the class. And I thought you were quite kind with him, pointing out that his sister was halfway up the <laughs> the window at the same That's time. That's her favorite spot in the house. Yeah. 
So you went over to retrieve her down from the glass and brought her down. Mm -hmm. But then he didn't go back at it again. Mm -hmm. So he must have known that you meant that this was actually the end of it. And it really was the end of a series of things because the next thing then he's ready to go take his bath. Mm -hmm. I guess what impressed me about that is here he hadn't come in for dinner and he did some revengeful things because you didn't cook a second dinner. He'd broken his glasses, he's pounded on the glass, and now it's time for the bath. That would have been a chance for punishment for you to say, well, since you've done these other things, there's going to be no bath by yourself. That you, you really could have used that as punishment, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. So to me, that conveys that you had considerable goodwill toward him mm -hmm. and a real willingness to let him have another chance to pull the nose up on the plane and do okay. Mm -hmm. Maintain goodwill, even with repeated correction. You can use these principles and skills to improve your relationships with children. Here are some of the main principles from this episode. Give playful, positive attention to reduce yeah. negative attention getting. Set clear limits. Expect them to be tested and enforce them consistently. Point out the needs of the situation rather than telling children what to do. Tantrums will stop when the audience is removed. <laughs>